would you like for lunch today, my little cherry blossom? asked Yoko's mother. All my favorite things, please, answered Yoko. Yoko's mother spread steamed rice on a bamboo mat. She rolled up a secret treasure inside each piece. Then she packed it all in a willow-covered cooler. Have a wonderful day at school, my little cherry blossom, said Yoko's mother. I will, answered Yoko. Yoko said hello to all her friends. Everyone in Mrs. Jenkins' class sang the good morning song. At noon, Mrs. Jenkins rang the lunch bell. Lunch box is out and open, please, boys and girls, said Mrs. Jenkins. Timothy unwrapped a peanut butter and honey sandwich. Valerie had cream cheese and jelly. Fritz had a meatball grinder. Tulip had Swiss cheese on rye. Hazel had egg salad on pumpernickel. Doris had squeezed cheese on white. And the Franks had franks and beans. Yoko opened the willow-covered cooler. Inside was her favorite sushi. Tucked in the rice rolls were the crispiest cucumber, the pinkest shrimp, the greenest seaweed, and the tastiest tuna. What's in your lunch? asked one of the Franks. Ick, it's green, it's seaweed. Oh no, said the other Frank, don't tell me that's raw fish. Watch out, it's moving, said Doris. yucko rama said Tulip and Fritz. Valerie blew the playtime whistle. Everybody out, said Valerie. Yoko did not want to play ball or swing on the swings. What's wrong, Yoko? asked Mrs. Jenkins. Everybody laughed at my lunch, answered Yoko. They'll forget about it by snack time, said Mrs. Jenkins. But they didn't. During the snack time song, Yoko opened a thermos cup of red bean ice cream. Red bean ice cream is for weirdos, snorted the Franks. Mrs. Jenkins switched to the friendly song. Mrs. Jenkins knew the friendly song was not enough. Late into the evening, she fretted about Yoko. Finally, the answer came to her. Dear parents, Monday will be International Food Day at Hilltop School. Everyone is asked to bring in a dish from a foreign country. Everyone must try a bite of everything. Happy cooking, Mrs. Jenkins. We will make a deluxe sushi for the whole class, said Yoko's mother. Don't worry, my little cherry blossom. Everyone will try our sushi and everyone will love it. On Monday morning, Valerie and her mother brought in a plate of enchiladas. Timothy and his mother made Caribbean coconut crisps. Hazel brought Nigerian nut soup. Harry brought Brazil nuts. Doris brought Irish stew. Tulip brought potato niches. Monica brought a pitcher of mango smoothies and Fritz brought spaghetti. Big Frank cooked up a pot of Boston Franks and beans. At noon, Mrs. Jenkins rang the lunch bell and everyone sang the clean hand song. What does International Food Day mean to us, boys and girls? asked Mrs. Jenkins. Try everything, said everybody. When Valerie blew the playtime whistle, there was not a nibble of nuts or a sip of smoothie left. But no one had touched even one piece of Yoko's sushi. Yoko sat under the learning tree. Suddenly, she heard the clickety-clack of chopsticks. It was Timothy. He was still hungry. Let me show you how, said Yoko. Timothy polished off the rest of the crab cones his own way. Can we have sushi again tomorrow, he said. I'll ask my mother, answered Yoko. During the school bus song, Timothy found a coconut crisp in his pocket. He gave it to Yoko. It's even better than red bean ice cream, said Yoko. 
On the bus, Timothy and Yoko made plans to push their desks together and open a restaurant the very next day. And they did. They ordered tomato sandwiches and dragon rolls. For dessert, they had brownies with green tea ice cream, and they couldn't have asked for anything more. <laughs>